Oh, doctor, thanks so much. Here's the premier. Lockdowns. And when we invest in the health care, uh, there, there's one thing I keep saying for the last four years with all the other premiers from all the provinces and territories from all different political stripes. We need the federal government to pitch in the CHT Canadian health transfers. Folks, we're, we're, you know, we're getting 22 percent uh, out of the 100 percent that we're investing. There's no province, no territory that can sustain uh, the, the funding. We just can't do it. So we need the federal government to step up and contribute more than 22 percent. We need ongoing funding from the federal government because we, we can't take 78 percent of the burden. They take 22 percent of the burden and expect to continue to grow and, and fund the health care system. Premier, I want to ask you about the trucking uh, protest situation in Ottawa. Yeah. I know you put out a statement yesterday condemning some of those actions. Yeah. Why did it take you till Monday to put that out? And what is your message this morning to the truckers that remain there? Well, you know, my message right from the beginning of this pandemic, when it when it came to the truckers, uh, I appreciate everything they've done. I appreciate them bringing health supplies to hospitals, putting food on the grocery shelves. But there's there's three things I can't tolerate. Uh, desecration of any war memorials or any memorials. Zero tolerance for that. You know, what, what people have to do, and the, and the flags are waving around, is disgusting in my opinion. Outside of the greatest flag in the world, the Canadian flag. God bless them for waving the Canadian flag. But the other thing is, folks, there's, there's a million people that live in Ottawa. You know, I, I, I hear you. I hear the protesters. The province hears the protesters. The country hears the protesters. Now, it's time to let the people in Ottawa get back to their lives. These businesses that have been closed for, for you know, a while now, the restaurants want to reopen. So, you know, I get it. I hear you. But we, we have to let the, the people of Ottawa live their lives. Hi, good morning, Premier. Um, our, our colleagues in Ottawa have confirmed that um, no one from your office nor from the province reached out to the mayor's office in Ottawa over the weekend to discuss the situation. Uh, mayor Jim Watson received a call from the prime minister as an example, mm -hmm. but no call from from you. So what does that that say? I mean, you, you seem to you seem to mm -hmm. publicly publicly be telling the truckers to go home, but privately you're not offering any kind of support to the city of Ottawa. Well, I disagree with that. We have great ministers out right, right on the road, uh, right in the field. Uh, Minister McLeod said a very uh, strong statement. And we have Minister uh, Fullerton there. We're well represented. But no matter you're, you're if it's Jeremy Roberts province. and Goldie Gamari. I did put a statement out. I put a very strong statement out yesterday. So at any given time, if the mayor needs our support, uh, he knows where to contact us. He has my cell number, and uh, I put a, a strong statement. I'm putting a strong statement out today that people have to, you know, move on, let the people of Ottawa live, let the businesses open up, and that, that's my statement, Colin. Okay, another question related to Ottawa. Um, yeah. I'm sure you're... Uh, well appraised of what's happening within the Conservative Party uh, currently. Uh, the question for you, obviously, because a lot of people have been mentioning your name as a potential successor to Aaron O'Toole if things go that way. Do you have any plans whatsoever to step into the Conservative no. leadership race if there is a race now or sometime in the next No, four I years? have my hands full. I love being Premier of this province. We're going to build this province and, and I'm going to uh, continue uh, leading this province. Uh, that, that's my job. I, I am just you know, 24 seven working on getting us out of this pandemic. I want to unite this province. I, I can't stand this divide. When I see this divide in this country and in this province, I want people united and we're going to get there. We're going to get through this uh, together. We're going to get through it cautiously, but we're going to be uh, united at the end of the day. Hi, Premier. Matthew Bingley, Global News. Hey, Matthew. Uh, you, you talk about the cautious, phased approach to reopening the yeah. province, but uh, with the science table pointing to cases that are likely going to rise as we see restrictions ending, uh, and businesses that obviously need people's support, how can you both walk the line of saying, get out there and support businesses when, when we don't have the healthcare capacity at this moment yet? You know, you want to, it, it seems like yeah. they, they well, seem to fly in the face of each other. Well, not necessarily. You know, there, there's no secret. We have the toughest uh, guidelines in, in, in North America. In North America, as everyone's moving forward, we're being cautious. We're making sure we beef up our hospitals with the staff that are, are needed and well overdue with 6,700 healthcare workers that we hired, another 6,000 coming on, on board. We had uh, built 3,100 hospital beds and building billions and billions, spending billions of dollars 
uh, building new hospitals, building the infrastructure that's needed. But do you know who's an expert on this and showing strong leadership from day one, standing shoulder to shoulder with me, is Minister Elliott. Maybe I'll bring Minister Elliott up. Uh, has done an incredible job, Minister of Health. Thank you, Premier. First of all, we do have capacity in our hospitals, and the science advisory table has basically indicated that uh, it appears that the peak of Omicron has passed. That doesn't mean we're entirely in the clear, of course. We still do have high levels in both our hospitalizations and intensive care units. However, that is starting to decline. Uh, this week, we've had about 3,000 people admitted to hospital. Last week, it was over 4,000. We have capacity. That's why we're doing things like uh, releasing Directive 2 somewhat to allow for some of those procedures that people have been waiting for for some time to continue. We're opening up pediatric services surgeries, cancer screenings, uh, making sure that we can let independent health facilities operate, private hospitals. All of those things are possible because we do have the capacity that the Premier mentioned. We have created uh, over 3,100 hospital beds, over $5.1 billion, 67 new healthcare professionals into our system, so that even if the numbers do go up slightly as we start opening up, the modeling has been done to indicate that we will still have the capacity to deal with that increase, but also to start to deal with the people who have had procedures or surgeries postponed. So we feel that we are ready for whatever will happen as we move forward. I have one more question for you, so don't put the mask on yet. Um, when it comes to those surgeries that you're talking about, not all of those procedures have been given the green light. When, when will people who are waiting and have been waiting for months and months and months actually get a definitive answer when when as you mentioned cases could go back up and and could delay those case uh, those procedures even further well we uh, are confident that we have the capacity to be able to open up gradually and cautiously in the same way we're opening up the province gradually and cautiously we'll do the same thing with the release of directive 2 in a tiered approach we have four different tiers leading to ultimately opening everything up so that we can increase those volumes and as you probably are aware we put 300 million dollars last July into um, extra operating times for evenings and weekends to allow us to um, help serve those people who have been waiting for a long period of time so we're doing this very cautiously and carefully making sure we have capacity for people who have COVID and making sure that we have capacity for people who need those procedures and surgeries. And with the information that we've received from the science advisory table and from Dr. Moore, I'm confident we'll be able to deal with that. Minister, if you stay there just for one moment, thank you so much. Adrian Gober with City News. I'll ask a follow-up question to that. Uh, speaking, I was speaking with, with multiple families last week. Uh, one family, um, one gentleman has a, a sister who has a cancerous tumor on her kidney in need of surgery. He's a small business owner. He understands the need to reopen business, but he also understands the need for his sister to be able to get into a hospital. So while bars and restaurants and other parts of the economy are open today, but his sister's still waiting for surgery, what would you say to that family? First, I would say that I'm very sorry that people have had to have surgeries and procedures postponed. I know this has been very difficult for individuals and their families. Some have been waiting for a long period of time. But I would also say that uh, although we aren't able to continue with all of the surgeries and procedures right now, they are all very, very carefully triaged. So if someone has a life-threatening condition, they will still be served uh, right away. And so we have many doctors looking at this to make sure that if this uh, young lady were in a life-threatening condition, she would be able to have her surgery right away. So I think it's important to remember that everything hasn't stopped completely. The most most serious cases are being trans triaged and moved forward as quickly as possible to make sure that um, their lives will be saved. Thank you. Thanks. Just a question for Premier Ford. Uh, Premier, yourself and your government, you've repeatedly chastised the federal government when it comes to border measures. So would it be safe to assume that you then support the federal government's uh, mandate on truckers, similar to the United States, that they must be vaccinated to cross the border? So a, a clear answer to Ontarians may be, may be beneficial. Well, I, I think I've uh, made my statement uh, pretty clear right across the board. I, I believe in getting vaccinated. You know, I've, I've, I've been on the trucker side, I've always supported truckers from day one. 
but I support vaccinations. It's very simple. That's how we've been able to slowly get out of this, and that's how we're going to continue to slowly get out of it. People may disagree, one side or the other, but uh, I'm going to support uh, getting vaccinated. And that, that's no shot against the truckers. I think the world of the truckers, I've supported them from day one and appreciate and very grateful of everything they've done and continue to do uh, through, throughout this pandemic. Keep in mind, I think uh, it was close to 90% of the truckers are vaccinated, right? So I want to I thank uh, all of them. Okay, we'll move to the phones for questions now. First question, please. From Karen Howlett at the Globe and Mail. Hi, Karen. Hi, Premier. My my question my question is about the upcoming Council of the Federation meeting this Friday. Yeah. You and other premiers will be calling on the federal government to, as you mentioned earlier in your remarks today, yeah. to increase um, funding under the uh, Canada Health Transfer. There, there are advocates who are saying that any increase in federal funding should be tied to national mandatory standards for long-term care. So here's my question. What is your position on Ottawa's plan to introduce um, such long-term care standards across the country? Well, before I pass it over to the Minister of Health, uh, we're, we're strong believers, number one, all of us, is health is the jurisdiction of, of the province. Uh, in saying that, if the federal government wants to give us uh, additional funding and saying we want to allocate it to long-term care, we, we welcome that. But really, for decades, and then this is decades, it's not this government, it's that, this government, the previous government, we're, they're pitching in 22%. We've been preaching this for four years. So we got to make a move on this, and the federal government has to pitch in. We've spent billions and billions of thought, tens of billions of dollars uh, throughout this pandemic, and yes, they've supported us on one-time funding. One-time funding doesn't cut it. We need continuous funding uh, all the way through for, for many years to come if we want to sustain the increase of uh, money we're spending in health care. So I'll pass it over to the, the Minister of Health. Yes, health care is the responsibility of the province, and as the Premier indicated, if the federal government wants to give us some money for long-term care, well, absolutely, we will take it. But the primary problem is the Canada health transfer amount is too low. At 22 percent, it doesn't cover the increase in costs that we're sustaining in health care, and as the health care budget increases, of course, that means other important parts of the the, uh, what the government has jurisdiction over, education, infrastructure, everything else, we won't be able to invest those dollars. So what we need in health is sustainable funding through the federal government, increase it from 22 percent far above what it is right now because among other things we're having great medical discoveries, great innovations, great new um, medications to deal with uh, rare diseases, things like that, our health care costs, our drug costs, our building costs, everything's going up. So we're appealing to the federal government to uh, to help us so that we can have a strong, healthy health budget as well as the rest of the items in our provincial budget. Follow up, and this is the last So question. as a follow up, would, would the province of Ontario work cooperatively with the federal government in introducing national mandatory long-term care standards? Well, we've been working cooperatively uh, right from day one. From When I first got elected, we were in conversations with the federal government, and it just seems to continue to, to go year after year after year. And the, you know, kicking the can down, down the road, that doesn't cut it. Uh, we're all united. Uh, we have a strong, strong group of premiers, all different political stripes, but we're all united on making sure that the federal government pays their fair share. It's as simple as that. And uh, we're, we're leading the way in, in new builds. You know, our goal, again, is 30,000 beds uh, in the, by 2028. We're well on our way. Uh, we're well on our way to making sure that, that we continue to build hospitals as well. Uh, we've had more builds than, than, than ever in the history of Ontario that I can remember uh, right across the board. But we can't do it alone. We need uh, the Canadian health transfers to increase drastically and consistently ongoing sustainable funding for the people of Ontario.
Thanks, everyone. And I just, I, I got to give a personal shout out. I have one person in the Ford family that's non-political. That's my brother, Randy. It's his birthday today. So he's the smartest of the, the group because he's not involved in politics. Anyways, happy birthday, Randy. All the best. Thanks, everyone. Okay.